In this video I will show you the best Australia strategy when it comes to playing 4 player fixed card games with decent players. The strategy basically guarantees you to get one of the first two places as long as you can successfully pull it off. So make sure to stay tuned to the end because it is going to be epic. As mentioned it is 4 player fixed card game with balance blitz dice rolls and 60 seconds per turn. The alliances are turned on. My opponents are two master rank players who are purple and yellow, and one intermediate rank player who is green. The players straightly sent the alliances requests to me in the beginning of the game at the same time, so I guess everyone is allied with everyone. One person probably sent the alliance to everyone else, and others decided to follow it as well. But that doesn't matter too much, as in the beginning of the game your main goal is to get a continent mostly, so alliances mostly can be only beneficial or at least not harmful, as your allies either move their troops out from your continent, or do nothing to help you out at all, but at the same time they don't hurt you either. So if they want to have an alliance, then that's fine, I will accept it anyways. As later on in the game I will still have the choice with which of them I want to keep the alliance, and with which of them is not that really beneficial to be allies anymore. As after all, Let's remember that this game is being played with subscribers who are decent players, but not random suicidical public lobby players who are very emotional and tend to get very mad like crazy. The purple player suggests me to attack the yellow player, and I would really like to team up on the yellow player indeed since he is going for the biggest continent of us all. But for now I think it could be a little bit dangerous, as with yellow player having a 10 troop set at 3 cards. He could go with the decision of taking Australia from me, by seeing that it might be his last chance in case I attacked him. So what do I do now, is pretending to appear as a good yellow player's ally by moving my troops from Europe, so he would be so confident that he is holding it, that he wouldn't even consider of potentially taking Australia from me anymore. So I'm just buying the time to have the maximum safety. As a few turns after even if the yellow player changed his mind and wanted to take Australia from me, he couldn't anymore because he would be too weak to do so. After all he is going before me, so he gets to trade in sets firstly as well, so before attacking him, it's better to guarantee for yourself as much safety as possible, but then I will definitely afford attacking him much for sure, so it will really depend if the purple player still wants to team up with me, or whether he decides to go after his own gains by trying to expand and capturing North America, in that case I would have to switch my attention to attacking him. I invaded yellow into Europe, so let's see if the purple player invades green into Africa as well. And yes he did guys, that's what I call a proper Australian and South American alliance in a 4 player fixed card games. If of course the purple player continues teaming up with me. Surprisingly the yellow player didn't put some more troops to the Icelandic border while still keeping his biggest army blocked. So I will invade him easily without having any potential bigger consequences. And of course I had to help out my ally purple by invading the green player into Africa also, since he didn't really have a good accessibility anymore. The yellow and green player's biggest priorities were to turtle into their continents without really guarding their borders at all, while the purple player's priority was to team up with me on other players. So of course the purple player is much more valuable for me, so this is why of all the players I decided to keep the alliance with him. Well, officially I'm still allied with all the players, but unofficially green and yellow are my enemies since I'm attacking them. There is not really much benefit for you from turtling players, other that they don't want to attack you, they just hope to continue getting troops while basically not doing anything at all or even not guarding their borders, when hoping that others will do the dirty work for them, so when they see that they have more troops than others combined, they could take others out in a single turn. Well, in this case the yellow player is going for the biggest continent, so even if he guarded it properly, then it would still make the most sense to attack him rather than anybody else, if we don't want that he would outgrow us a lot the troop wise. The green player was going for Africa which only gives one troop more than South America or Australia, so potentially he could have hold it in case he had properly guarded all three borders from the beginning he captured it. But since he didn't, it was no brainer to continue keep invading him as well. As why to team up on only one opponent when you could successfully do that on even two of them. 
it's the best strategy for Australian and South American players in a four-player fixed card game when playing with decent not suicidical players. Of course I and purpled player could have just turtled in our continents as well, rather than trying to attack others. But then the game would have just been in a stalemate situation, and sooner or later we would still have been forced to attack each other if we had wanted to conclude the game. But without both of us having that much advantage of course. Or even worse scenario happening of the yellow player eliminating one of us, with the yellow player successfully holding Europe each turn, he would have become much stronger than anybody else, so then for the game to continue, he would have needed to eliminate one of the players, and he would have had the choice which one to eliminate. Like for example taking the Australian player out and becoming the Australian player by himself. That would have been the worst scenario for me as I am the Australian player in this game. So by attacking Yellow into Europe, we prevented him from becoming the strongest player who is much stronger than anybody else, and not giving him the opportunity to eliminate any three of us. And by attacking Green as well, I and Purple player just guaranteed the maximum advantage for us, that nobody else would be as strong as us, so we would have the highest chances to win the game. And that's so funny. The Yellow player has just invaded Green into Africa by himself. He wants to become one of us. Purple requests me to attack Green. Well, I would have rather attacked Yellow, as one thing he is quite stronger than Green, so after eliminating Green I wouldn't like that he would become as strong as us. And the second thing it was obvious to see that the Green player was much more mad on Purple rather than me, so personally for me it would have been way better to keep Green in a 3 player situation instead of Yellow. But I really wanted to stay as a good ally for the purple player, so we would continue teaming up, and since I assumed that he would potentially just take the green player out if help him out, I decided just to manual roll the green player, so we could finally get rid of the fourth player who is not really needed in the game in order for the balance of the game to be sustained. So here comes the three player situation, I'm not sure whether we will continue teaming up with each other, but we potentially could, if the purple player wants as well. The purple player blocked his biggest army in Brazil rather than putting it in North America, so that quite indicates that he would like to be more passive I would guess. But we will see. Well, with the yellow player moving out from blocked place, it's probably a good decision for the purple player to keep his biggest army in South America, so the yellow player couldn't steal it from him. Also another thing was that the purple player captured Africa, and with yellow player not invading it, Purple would have started getting more troops than me. So because of these reasons I decided to capture Europe and see how it goes. Since I didn't invade Purple into Africa, he might not invade me into Europe as well, and since the yellow player let Purple hold Africa, he might let hold me Europe as well. Or maybe the yellow player invades both of us now, that I would really like as well. But the yellow player has just only invaded me, and I mean that's a smart decision. As if both of your opponents are teaming up on you, then it's better to attack only one of them. So one of the opponents would have more troops than the other one, so that weaker invaded opponent would be forced to betray his not invaded ally, so the game wouldn't be given away to him. But if as the weakest player who is being destroyed, you attack both of your opponents, then you just basically help them out to destroy you. As they're not only equally crush their troops into you, but you waste your troops equally into them as well, so that doesn't help you at all. And in the situations when both of your opponents are teaming up on you, but when you're quite stronger than them, then obviously you could and probably should attack both of them, to not let your advantage disappear. So all in all the yellow player had made a great decision back then when he invaded me. And if I were him, then I would have just left my army into Europe, so the red player wouldn't have been able to recapture it, so the purple player would be getting quite more troops, so the red player would be forced to invade him, and if the purple player had taken that very seriously, then they wouldn't have been such good teaming buddies anymore. Anyways, to be honest I didn't really expect for the purple player to capture North America, that's really bad for me. With the yellow player becoming so weak, and with us getting so many troops per turn, now it has become very dangerous, one mistake could really give away the game for another player. I cannot really crush the troops I've got into the yellow player now, as the purple player could take him out, 
and then he could attack me first. Or the purple player instead of taking the yellow player out, could just straightly betray me by attacking me into Europe and then properly guard both of the Americas and potentially getting a good advantage by outsmarting me. So instead of attacking yellow, I decided that it would be better if I attack the purple player into North America. I did that politely by saying that I'm sorry but I need to attack your territory, and only invaded him into North America. Hoping that he understands, and doesn't start a war between us. So I could still be able to potentially outsmart him by taking out yellow and holding multiple continents while his biggest armies are being blocked. To be honest I might have already considered taking the yellow player out and trying to regain the troops by holding Asia and next turn getting an attacker advantage by attacking the purple player's biggest army first. But unfortunately I've got a crappy 4 troops set, and even now I have 2 soldiers. So I cannot do much now, other than ending the alliance with the purple player and attacking him before he attacks me. And oh boy. I didn't expect that, I didn't expect that at all. I didn't expect the yellow player crushing the purple player's army, and then capturing as many territories as possible. I think he literally gave away me the game. Especially with the purple player's armies being blocked. I think I really got this game guys. I think I will go with the Asian endgame strategy. Well actually I can go for North America as well. Let's take out the yellow player firstly and then decide. I think I can safely capture North America as well. So let's do that and capture some territories in Africa. Well, I've just realized that I messed up. As I would even need to fortify my troops at least to the two places, as fortifying to one doesn't properly protect neither North America nor Asia. But I mean I can still try and hope for the best in case the purple player doesn't get a good set. So let's see how it goes for the purple player, but I think I won this game either way, having not only more troops, but territories and cards too. Yeah, it's a GG. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, then I would recommend checking some of these out as well. Watching more videos will help you to progress so much faster. Highly increase your skills by simply watching risk videos.